Well, I, I tell you the truth, we did not check prospectively because basically our success rate with those 53 patients uh, with the minimum one year follow-up shows that the overall clinical success rate was basically the same of an ESM for 83%. Uh, what I can tell you is that most of our patients had dysphagia, some degree of dysphagia. The difference is that we ask our patients to just start having a normal diet. This is something we don't do with our Nissen patients. We give to the Nissen patient a sheet with some instructions to avoid some food for the first two or three months. Those patients started eating the, fall, the next day and they reported some degree of dysphagia within the first couple of months. Once they call saying, I have some dysphagia, we just said, well, go ahead with some semi-liquid diet. Don't worry about dysphagia will go away. And this was basically our, our experience. The first patient was, I think, in, 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 the Amer in another center was explanted because of some, uh, basically the reason was not, uh, the reason was dysphagia. Our patient was explanted because of intractable chest pain. This was the main indication to explant the device. And uh, again, we discuss the issue with the, with the patient. He was taking some buscopan, some drugs. He was really very afraid of this uh, very strange. I, I have to tell you, we studied this patient extensively before removing. We did, uh, Greta may know all the tests, uh, manometry, which was totally normal. The pH study was normalized. He had only this intractable pain that was relieved after surgery, and he accepted this uh, uh, to, to compromise uh, to this, uh, he said, I don't want to have a Nissan. You can do whatever you want, but not a Nissan. So we opted for a, a door because of what it was just an anterior wrap. We didn't do to dissect around the esophagus. And so I think it was reasonable to do that. I think we should start with minimal dissection. And we just, uh, uh, we just divide the peritoneal reflection and then by grasping downwards, you, we realize how the hiatus is, if the hiatus is enlarged or not. Well, the problem is that we have to learn from our failures. And I'm sure, I'm sure, by um, we have the, the videos with us, we try to see on the, on the plane with, with great, I, I know for sure that by having in mind to do a real minimal dissection, we place the device too low. Because if you don't do a, let's say, re, a, a minimum of dissection, it's more difficult to identify the, ve the posterior vagus, and you, the risk is to go below and mis, uh, misplacing the, the device. So I think we tried in all cases to preserve the, uh, those, this phrenoesophageal ligament, which sometimes is clearly anatomically evident, sometimes not. Uh, and based on our experience, we had uh, just, uh, we were looking at one patient who is uh, ins unsatisfied. We have 17% of our patients at one year unsatisfied. I, I look at the x-rays and this patient has the device still in this 45 degree angle, typical uh, angulation, but it's one centimeter above. It's in the hernia pouch. And at that time, in this patient, we said this was borderline. We don't do a hiatoplasty. We don't attempt further reduction. And this was a reason for failure, I believe. So uh, probably the device does not work as we initially thought because we were uh, aware of this physiological uh, uh, background that the device could work within the positive pressure transmitted by the hernia sac, of course limited, small hernia sac in the mediastinum, but probably this is not true. I don't know. Maybe Dr. Demister has some. Uh, 
So anytime we see a borderline situation, we just prefer to, to do still minimal dissection. It's not the dissection we used to do, we, we do for a Nissan. That means that we want clearly to see the aorta, we want to see everything, uh, dissection of the distal 10 centimeters of the esophagus. We still do a minimal dissection, but we want to approximate the crura. Okay. And I think it's um, yeah. based on this limited experience. But I know that in the States, with the multi-center trial, they probably had the same uh, impression. We have thought a lot in the past why the posterior and not the anterior. So the anterior is most of the time uh, intramural, so it's difficult to recognize. But the posterior, I think that there is a rationale for identify because you need to have a clear anatomical landmark. If you identify the vagus and you are sure that you are in the esophagus, so this is a device that must be applied around the esophagus. The, the, the vagus, when runs posteriorly and then goes back to the stomach, that's the point that you want to avoid, to do a, a kind of gastric band dissection. So you must be sure to, to be up. So I think it's a very nice anatomical land, and you need anatomical landmarks also to make the procedure very well reproducible. We have made mistakes and going back with those patients when they come in and you realize that uh, I, I realize more and more that this anatomical point is very well taken. Exactly the same, exactly the same. We have done yeah, we have done several of those uh, barium swallows at one, two years. Actually, we do more follow-up studies than is indicated in the protocol, just to, to make sure and to understand better how the procedure works. And I can assure you that we have never seen any dilatation. What we see is that the beads, uh, the, you, you can see an actuation of two or three beads at the most, not all beads as it was demonstrated and was seen commonly in animals. No, no NG tube, nothing. No calibration, no. and neither for, no. the, for the suture of the crura. No tube no. inside. No tube inside. And the second question is... And we are very careful. We take our time when we size, because the sizing, I think, is a very crucial mm -hmm. issue. We just move the, um, the esophagus and even the sizing device to make sure that we are... Uh, just um, um, around uh, the right, uh, to make sure that the sizing is reproducible in different angles, um, in different positions.